my goodness, look where I'm at again. I'm about to call it in. This has a like a an odd smell that I can't quite place. I don't know what it is. But I've smelled it before. It smells like dank hotel or something. Yeah, I'm not sure what the smell is. But uh trying to get it cool in here. Um man. What uh I wish it'd let me flip the camera. It's me. Um, I wish it'd let me flip the camera after I started recording, but I don't see that option on any of the things I've used so far. This is I'm using open camera, and I've got the settings turned down super low, so the video quality is probably horrendous. But uh, it's awesome because these videos, even though they're like 20-something minutes long, they're only like 35 megabytes. So that's pretty sweet. When I get a, a solution for high-speed unlimited internet, then uh, you know maybe I'll bump up the quality. But uh, I'm just pacing around in the room. I think all the rooms are pretty full with uh, trainees. There's a whole bunch of crap that, to talk about. So let me try to formulate some kind of uh, plan here. <laughs> um, okay, so today was my last day on the truck. What direction is my window facing? I think I'm on the other side of the building. Yeah, I'm facing the interstate. Um, the, uh, the truck is on the other side of the building. They have a little truck parking lot there. Miguel is staying the night in the truck. Um, so what happened today? We uh, This morning... We woke up, I think I did a video this morning, um, and I assumed, like, he the, he told me we were going to leave at 7.30, but he didn't show up until 8.30 from the gym. So I assumed that because uh, we had issues sleeping the night before, that he was just letting me get extra sleep, and that, that actually was the case. He was uh, letting me get an extra hour of sleep. He felt bad for... Uh, waking me up, you know, and not, not allowing me to sleep throughout the night. Um, so we, uh, eight 30, we went over to the, uh, recycle paper place and we picked up paper. Let me, let me try putting this somewhere where God, I, I just, I really wish I could flip the damn camera. Um, I just don't even know if it's going to be, like, pointing at me or whatever. I'm just going to plop it up uh, next to the TV there. I don't even know if you can see me, but it's just audio anyway, so. Uh, um, what, what happened? So, we went to the, the recycle paper place. They were awesome. They got us in immediately. They got us loaded really quick. And then we took off from there to uh, Muskogee to make the delivery. I drove all the way to Muskogee. Um, and I was supposed to drive all the way to Van Buren, but whenever we left Muskogee, he said that he wanted to drive and that I was done. I can go ahead and log out. He had me go ahead and completely log out of the truck as if he dropped me off. Like, I did my post-trip, I went off duty, and uh, I sent a macro uh, student off truck or something like that, and then I logged completely out of the uh, ELD, the electronic logging device, while we were on our way from Muskogee to uh, Van Buren, and it's only like 70 miles, so like an hour, hour and a half or something. So during that that commute, I did all that stuff and finished some paperwork and basically tried to finalize everything um, to get off the truck and I packed up all that stuff. Um, actually, I packed up while we were getting loaded in Muskogee. Or while we were, no? Was it in Muskogee? No, because we didn't really have any, we, we weren't waiting on anything in Muskogee. I think it was while we were getting loaded in Wichita, Kansas, early in the morning. <coughs> um, 
which brings, I'm going to jump off, I'm going to digress, you know, get used to it, it happens, I try not to do it, but that's just me, this whole, you know, virus thing, holy crap, so, I have not noticed a traffic slowdown, I've seen truck drivers posting on trucker forums, and in YouTube videos and stuff, talking about how awesome it is, the traffic is lighter, and um, I'm not seeing that. Traffic is the same, if not heavier, especially out in the country. Like uh, I-70 in Kansas is desolate. Like there's very few towns, they're small towns, and they're spread far apart. And it's usually, even in the middle of the day, very little traffic on that road. And whenever we went across I-70 in Kansas, it was just constantly getting passed by cars. And there were at least three or four cars that I saw that I could see those big bundles of toilet paper out their back window. I'm assuming a few things. Maybe it's uh, people that are driving between towns to try to find uh, stuff. Um, people I think I talked about this in the previous video, so I won't go back into it again, elaborating into that. But uh, there's a lot of possibilities. But I'm not seeing that die down in traffic. I think the uh, reduced traffic is probably in the major, major cities like Chicago, L.A., New York, where a huge amount of the uh, workforce is being told to work from home or they're not going to work for whatever reason. Uh, I think a lot of the more the smaller towns uh, they don't have remote work options for most of them they don't have office jobs uh, so I think most of them are still going to work and on top of that I think a lot of them are you know driving between towns looking for goods like if you live in Chicago and you're trying to find toilet paper you're not going to drive you know very far away from Chicago looking for toilet paper uh, there are tons, there are more stores in Chicago than you could ever visit. Uh, so you're probably not going to move, you know, go outside of Chicago looking for toilet paper. But in these small towns where they only have one or two stores, they check those one or two stores and they don't have toilet paper or uh, baby formula, whatever, bullets, uh, then they're going to the next town. I think that's the why the interstate traffic was a little busier than normal on the rural areas, you know, out, out in the middle of nowhere. So, we'll, we'll get back on topic. Um, so, left, uh, left there, went to Muskogee. Everything went really smooth. Um, not any drama today. Um, Miguel was really focused on other things. I think I've mentioned in previous videos that uh, um, his, like, he's a little irritated about his mileage that he's getting. Um, <coughs> like, he's a little stressed out about his finances. Um, Miguel lives in a really, really wealthy neighborhood in the Dallas area. I think he actually lives in Dallas. I think he lives really close to downtown Dallas in Highland Park or something like that. It's some really um, expensive neighborhood. Uh, I think he told me just the, the plot of land his house is on, just the land itself is worth like $470,000 or something like that without a house. Um, and he said he's constantly getting offers from people that want to just buy it, tear down his house, and build a massive house. Because he doesn't have a massive house in that one. But uh, anyway, that's what he, he was mainly focused on today. Because last week, um, they gave us a long weekend, and they didn't give us very many miles. I think he only had 1,800 miles last week. And then this week, um, I don't. he doesn't have a trip after Dallas. So it, we started Sunday, and we took Monday off because we did all of our trip on Sunday and didn't deliver until Tuesday. And then we had a short trip, well, a, a decent trip on Wednesday. Um, so in this work week so far, he's basically only worked like three days. 
and he thinks he's off the rest of the week, and he's trying to get more more loads, and his dispatcher's kind of blowing him off. Uh, so he's a little frustrated about uh, these low mileage weeks that he's getting because he has insanely high bills, crazy high bills. So that's what he was mainly focused on today. But he did still take me, um, and uh, he took me to the place where they're going to test me um, and let me do some backing there. I did. I backed up into the spot like five times or something. Um, I'm going to pass the test easily, easily. It's nothing like the, uh, the CDL test. Um, on the CDL test on the, the alley dock, which is basically the type of uh, dock that they have, the, it's the type of backing maneuver that they're going to have us do on the road test. Um, at the, the CDL test, it's a smaller area that you have to do the, the, the maneuver. And you have a point system where you only have a certain number of pull-ups um, or if you hit a cone or anything like that, you, you, have, you, you lose a point every time you do anything aside from back up. So if you ever have to you know, it, pull forward to readjust or anything, that counts against you. If you get out of the truck to look, that counts against you. You get like two free pull-ups and two free get out and looks. Everything past that counts as points. Now this doesn't have cones. This has real trailers. So if you hit a cone, <laughs> then you're going to be hitting a trailer. Um, so you'll probably fail the test if that happens. And uh, the place that you have they uh, have a, have you back into is actually a pretty tight spot. You only have like a foot on either side. It's a very realistic spot for like uh, a truck stop or something like that because the truck stops, the spaces are fairly compact. You don't have a whole lot of room in between the trucks. So it's a very realistic backing. And you have a decent amount of room, but not a crazy amount of room. You are limited on how much you have in front of the space. You can't do a straight back. It's They, they purposely limited it to where you can't do a straight back. You can't you know, swing in as close as you can, then swing back out, and then line it up, and you're just straight back in. No, there's not enough room to do that. It is small enough to force you to do an alley dock. Um, so Miguel did take the time to, even though he has other things, he's really stressed out about his finances, he took the time to help me out with, uh, you know, the backing and answering any questions I had. And he called the training manager a couple of times to clarify some stuff, which brings up another thing. There's a huge thing of drama. I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the video this morning, but they're shutting down the Van Buren terminal. Um, it's supposedly shut down right now um, so the training manager said it's not going to affect my road test supposedly I'm still going to be able to do my road test here in Van Buren and um, she has no idea on whether or not a truck is going to be available for me here. That's something that's controlled by the shop, or I don't know who controls truck assignments. But when we drove by the terminal earlier, we saw several of the newer trucks at the terminal. Like, I don't know, at least six. Um, and when I say newer trucks, it's because when I went through orientation at this terminal, there were probably 50 or more trucks in the parking lot, but they were all really old, retired international pro stars that were they were no longer using. I, I think they only had two, like, still in their life trucks. Like, they, they were still using trucks, even though they had, like, 50 trucks in that parking lot. Um, they only had, like, two usable trucks. Um, it looked like they had about six or more usable trucks um, in, in the parking lot when we drove by today. But I think they have an orientation class going right now. Orientation typically goes Monday, Tuesday, and then there's another orientation that's Wednesday, Thursday. So it's Wednesday, 
So tomorrow is when they're going to be assigning trucks to whatever orientation is going on right now, the Wednesday, Thursday orientation. So even if there are five or six trucks there, there may be eight to ten people that need trucks. So I don't know if I'm going to get a truck out of the terminal here or if they're going to have to get me a rental and I'm going to have to drive to West Memphis and get a truck out of there. I really hope I can get a truck out of here because if I get a truck out of here, I only live 150 miles away. They'll probably just let me deadhead home. That would be amazing. Um, they might even let me bobtail home. I might park the truck in front of my house. Screw my neighbors. Um, I'm quite certain that I can park a truck right next to my house. Uh, so, but uh, so we got to Van Buren. He took me over next to the terminal where they do the road test. We did those backing maneuvers. Came back over here to the hotel after that, and his uh, new student Michael was uh, walking around outside and he got on the phone with Michael and uh, he was like, hey, I'm, I'm walking around outside. We actually saw him as we were pulling up and he sat there and watched uh, Miguel back in uh, to the spot here. Um, and uh, I mean, it, it worked out really well. Uh, Michael seems like a really good guy. Um, he's really nice. Um, I'm, I'm hoping the two of them get along really well. Uh, I think Michael's only previous experience was that he drove a box truck. Um, and he thought he... Okay, so Michael seems like a really nice guy. The only thing that really concerned me a little bit was that whenever uh, Miguel asked him if he had any previous experience driving these trucks... Um, he said, oh yeah, I used to drive box trucks, so I should pick this up pretty quick. Um, a box truck is nothing like one of these tractor trailers. Absolutely nothing like it. Nothing. It's not even remotely close. Uh, so, I hope that uh, he's not... He doesn't seem like he's an arrogant person, but I hope he, he he's not an arrogant person. Um, he will butt heads with Miguel if he is a little bit arrogant. He doesn't seem like that, though. He seems really nice. Um, so, Michael and Miguel both helped me carry in all my luggage into the hotel. And we sat around, and I, you know, took all the luggage up to my room after I checked in. We chatted downstairs for a few minutes. And then we all went out to Miguel's truck. And uh, I was just going to help Miguel clean out the truck. Uh, before he got his new student in there and Michael was like hey I'm bored of, I'm sit I'm, I'm tired of sitting in my room in the hotel so I'll come out and help you guys so Michael actually came out there and all three of us cleaned out the truck it's pretty awesome and uh, once we finished that then um, I told them that I was going to go grab something to eat and head to my room and then Miguel started uh, training uh, Michael, you know, showing him all the controls and explaining everything to him and, you know, getting him all ramped up and all that stuff. And uh, because Michael doesn't have previous driving experience, well, Miguel basically told me that I was treated differently than any other student he's ever had. Because I had previous driving experience and because on the very first day he could uh, tell that I had previous driving experience because he said a lot of people come in and, and they're like I know how to drive or I have previous experience and they, they don't know what they're doing he said he could tell day one that I knew what I was doing so uh, he let me you know do stuff that um, he basically let me drive the truck like uh, without any restrictions like a normal driver but he was explaining to this guy that since he doesn't have any previous driving experience that like he can't use the armrests, he can't use cruise control, um, he can't have a drink up there, uh, he can't He can't do anything but drive when he's behind the wheel. Can't drink anything, can't play, he can't have his phone up in the front while he's driving, nothing. Um, a lot of restrictions um, on students. And because now that they can track 
who's driving the, the miles. Miguel said that he's just going to sit in the passenger seat and let the students do all the driving going forward. Uh, so that's, I, I was the last of that. <coughs> and the other thing I'm about to be the last of is I might be one of the last people to uh, test out of uh, the Van Buren Terminal. Um, I don't know if they're going to continue doing orientation or uh, testing people out in Van Buren. Um, I remember we, Miguel asked Sheila about that and she told him and he told me and I forgot. I forgot what it was, but he called two or three different people to figure out what was going on with the terminal shutdown to get the exact details of what exactly was being shut down. Um, and I don't know what exactly is being shut down, honestly. Basically, every building, so they have two facilities. They have a, a corporate headquarters, which is a nice new looking building, and it's like manicured lawns and it looks like a standard corporate building and then they have the driver facilities which is like right next to it <laughs> there's not a street separating them or anything it's just like they're right next to each other on the same property um, but the driver facility thing is like tin sheet it's sheet metal siding type stuff and it's a really big building. It has a shop and it has uh, a, also like a three-story building there with all kinds of stuff in it, a driver lounge, a pretty big parking lot. Um, it's my understanding that the entire driver facility, the parking lot and all of the buildings associated are no longer USA trucks. They have sold or leased it to somebody else and we can't go on that property anymore. Um, I did see, like I said, we saw like six trucks that look like they're ready to be assigned to people um, in that parking lot. Those may be the last ones that they have there because they are no longer going to have access to that parking lot. So I may be one of the last people to get road tested out of this place. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know what's going to happen going forward. but. I was told by Sheila that I would be able to do a road test in Van Buren. That could change. Uh, I might find out tomorrow that I've got to go to West Memphis to get a road test. But uh, the uh, the road test should be really, really simple. I think I alluded to the backing thing earlier where um, I was talking about the CDL test and all the points. And you have a time limit and you have a point limit. On this one, you just have a time limit. You need to get it in that spot within 15 minutes. And um, I got it in the spot every single time on every back that I did, but Miguel was trying to teach me a new backing maneuver. Um, I'm not a really big fan of it. Um, I just kind of, I know how to do setups on stuff, and I just, the backing maneuver that he was teaching me is probably what he teaches every student to do the test and it's very similar to what CDL schools teach it's reference point backing and uh, it, it's I'll probably use it tomorrow on my test but I don't like doing that reference point crap um, but one of the things that he did suggest that I do and I kind of agree with him on it, is on my um, my 45 backs or 90 backs or whatever, we'll call them all alley dogs. 45 and 90 alley dogs. Your standard backing that you do at a truck stop or a shipper or receiver. The CDL school taught us to come in really flat and really far away from the spot. And you know, you, you pull like way out here and then you you know back it in there like that what he wants me to do is come in and come in at as much of an angle as possible and back it in like that 
I do something that's kind of in between those two because I like having my trailer pre-set up kind of like how you know Miguel does it where he you know almost has it straight back but I also like how much maneuverability I have on the the flat back setup like I have complete control over where I'm going with it so I do something in between because the problem with the way Miguel does it is that whenever he finishes his maneuver he has almost no room in front of his truck to do any maneuvering whatsoever so um, he is at the mercy of his setup he cannot really correct his setup be uh, well he there are certain ways that he can correct his setup but he's limited in how he can adjust his setup because once he finishes his setup he can't start chasing right away which is you know for anyone who doesn't drive trucks it's chasing is getting back in front of the trailer he has to stay in his setup for a, you know a few feet before he can start chasing because he gets so close to whatever object is over here tractors trailers walls whatever um, whereas the maneuver that I do I still have enough room in front of me that I can you know chase anytime I want to I have tons of maneuverability so I really like doing it the way I do it um, it's, it, for me it's the happy medium between the, the flat back and then the uh, I don't even know what you'd call what he does. Um, but anyway, I'll probably use his setup that he told me about uh, on this little, you know, back test that I have to do. I don't think I'm going to have problems on the test. Like, I'm a really, really good driver, and I've seen a lot of people that are bad drivers make it through these road tests. So I, I'm still going to stress on it because it's a test and that's what I do on tests. I stress on them, but uh, I'm sure I'll do fine. Um, what time is it? It is uh, 8.51 p.m. They don't start doing road tests until about 9 a.m. Um, they're serving, so I asked them when I checked into this hotel if they're doing the, the breakfast, because they do an awesome breakfast here. They have a room dedicated to it where they just have this huge uh, item things like you can get cereal and milk or uh, sausage, eggs, biscuits and gravy. Um, they have all kinds of biscuits and rolls and Swiss rolls, orange juice, tons of stuff. You can even make your own waffles. Um, but I, I asked them when I checked in if they were still doing the breakfast and they said no. Um, they said because of the, the coronavirus, they're no longer doing that breakfast because it's kind of like a, a buffet. And uh, I think that, I don't know if it's like they forbid it or um, outlawed it or banned it or whatever in Arkansas, or if it's just, you know, they chose to stop doing it because they were asked, because health officials are asking people to stop buffets and stuff like that. Um, but they did say that um, I could come down at like 6, between 6 and 6.30 or something like that, and they would give me a plate that I could take back to my room. And I think they said it's sausage and biscuits. So it's basically sausage biscuits. Um, I might get up there. Initially, when I thought that it was the full breakfast, I was definitely getting up at 6 a.m. for that. Um, but now that it's just sausage biscuits, I'm debating it. Um, I might get up for that. But, uh, so I'll, I'll probably get up at like 6 a.m., run down there, grab some sausage biscuits, come back up to my room, eat, take a shower, get ready, and uh, then around 8 a.m., I'll probably uh, call Sheila, my trainer manager, and uh, have her get a shuttle over here to pick me up. And then I'll be back over at the terminal somewhere around 8.30 or something. And they supposedly start doing road tests around 8 or 9 a.m. So I'll be there 8.30ish is my plan. And... Uh, 
I'll, uh, oh, I'll do my road test. After I pass my road, the way the company is set up is that they won't really talk to you about your next step until you pass whatever hurdle is keeping you from there. Like, uh, they won't let me talk to lease until I get my own truck. Um, they, uh, they wouldn't, they wouldn't talk to me about a whole bunch of stuff when I was in orientation, um, until I got, you know, to the next stage or whatever. So I have very little idea what's going to happen after I pass the road test. Um, they, I don't even know what, like, fleet I'm going to be in. I'm going to, all that stuff, I, I was just told that I would be introduced to my driver manager and we would talk about all that stuff after I passed the road test. So, uh, I, I'm basically going to have to decide or negotiate tomorrow um, what fleet I'm going to go into. And, uh, I don't think I want to do dedicated. The, uh, I know Miguel is stressed out because he's not getting many miles in Dedicated. Um, we ran into another guy in Dedicated today, and he said that he pretty much averages the same miles Miguel does, 2,200-ish miles a week. Sometimes he has 1,500, 1,400-mile weeks. Sometimes he has over 3,000-mile weeks. But he said it kind of averages out to about 2,200. Um, it's just not steady. They get a lot of time off. Miguel gets like two days off a week or more. And uh, I think that guy said that he gets a couple of days off every week as well. So it's, uh, I don't know. I don't, I, dedicated kind of scares me about the low miles. I thought that maybe I could get on dedicated tell them that I didn't want two full days off I just wanted to do a 34 every week uh, but that's pretty much what Miguel's been asking for and they're still giving him like two full days off a week and not getting him yep, not getting him very many miles I don't know there's still so many things up in the air I really hope that I get a truck out of Van Buren tomorrow and I can go straight home because I got a bunch of stuff I need to do at home and I want to take like three or four days off at home because I got some crap that I got to do at home. Um, I've got to get the truck set up. Um, I, I you know, got to do taxes. I got a whole bunch of house maintenance crap I have to do and just, uh, just a, a bunch of crap I need to do. I'm just going to ramble. I'm just going to ramble at this point, but I'm done. I'm done with training. Um, I haven't passed my road test yet, so I. Uh, but I am officially done with training. My truck that I was in, that I was training in, is in the parking lot of this hotel right now, and uh, he already has his next student uh, <laughs> um, on that truck. So it's pretty sweet. I'm glad to be done with it. Uh, Miguel and I said our goodbyes multiple, multiple times, thanked each other multiple, multiple times. Um, I know that we, 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 we got on each other's nerves, and that's just to be expected uh, whenever you're living in such a small, confined space. And you, it's not just that it's two people that close to each other. It's that we don't really have any separation. Uh, we don't have any personal space. It's a very long period of time with very little personal space. Now, luckily, he has weekends off most of the time. So, um, I think three of the four weeks that I was on the truck, I had two days off where I could just be away from him and have the truck to myself for a couple of days and just kind of, you know, just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but it just... Uh, whenever you don't have any personal space, it's nice to have some personal space for a couple of days to just kind of relax and, you know, sleep without interruption and stuff like that and just kind of recharge your battery. Um, it would have really, really sucked if he didn't take any time off throughout the entire training period. I would have been so 
so exhausted, fatigued, and just worn out by the end of training. But I'm, I'm pretty decent right now. But, uh, yeah, for even though we got on each other's nerves a few times, I'm sure, uh, and, you know, we butted heads on, you know, a couple of times, um, you know, there were, there, were, there were definitely times when we were each grumpy and we were not in the mood to deal with the other person's crap. Um, aside from that, uh, we got along great, and uh, I think he... Uh, he did a good job of uh, trying to train me up, um, you know, teach me the things and all that stuff. Um, so, I mean, he put a lot of effort forth into trying to make me as uh, comfortable as possible and uh, trying to help me with stuff. Um, so. Even though he irritated the hell out of me sometimes, I do appreciate him, uh, you know, training me and, uh, and going through all that with me. So, that's, I'm glad, it, I'm so glad it's over with, though. I am so glad it's over with. And I wish him nothing but the best. <laughs> and I wish his new student, Michael, nothing but the best. But, uh, yeah, I've been rambling for a long time. Let me see what's going on here on this. It's probably like 36 minutes, man. We're getting back into the old school, old long videos. I don't even know if it had me in the frame that whole time. It doesn't matter. Um, my stuff on the bed. That, that packet is very important. That's Miguel signed all the paperwork saying that I've been properly trained and he signed off on me that I'm ready to take a... A road test the like one month of experience is kind of nice and all but one month of experience in the trucking industry honestly is jack shit if I left this company and went to another company right now with one month of experience almost any company I went to that would be willing to take me with one month of experience would make me go through training again most likely Three months is the really, really, really big mark. Once you have three months of experience, then that's when you can start, your options become more open. Um, uh, I don't know, what what the hell? We, we drove all over looking for, like I have Clorox and Lysol wipes, those little round cylinder plastic bottles that you pull the wipes out of the top. Um, I brought some of those on the truck and we used the hell out of those things. We used all of them that I brought really quick and I started buying you know, new ones out of the truck stop. Well, then this panic buying started and you couldn't find them in the truck stops anymore. The last three or four truck stops we went to were sold out of them. I don't even think they were stocking them on the shelves. Love started hiding them behind the counter and if you try to buy them you have to you know ask the the cashier for them and they limit one per person it's getting crazy out there um, but there's a dollar tree next to here and I ran into the dollar tree and I found these things which are pretty much the same thing and uh, I bought like I don't know how many packs of them five or six or eight and I gave all of them to Miguel except that one pack right there that I kept for myself. And he gave me that roll of paper towels. Um, so <laughs> when I get into my own truck tomorrow or the next day or whenever it happens, um, at least I'll have paper towels and wipes. <laughs> but that's, that's part of the reason I really want to get back home as soon as possible once I get my truck is because I'm missing essential items like a broom sweeping out like a lot of customers require the trailer to be swept out to be clean you can't have debris in the trailer i don't have a damn broom um, that's not something that the company supplies standard in the truck that's something that you have to supply yourself um, 
you know, things like that I don't have. I, I wasn't going to bring my own broom on the trainer truck. There are a whole bunch of items, even though I, I brought this massive duffel bag. It's my pillow on top. And, you know, my shower bag and my laptop bag and my important items bag and my regular bag. And I brought a ton of crap, but there's still a ton of stuff that I didn't bring that I really need on my own truck because I, I didn't bring it on the trainer truck because the trainer already has those things like brooms and vice grips and tools and uh, you know wire cutters to cut seals and stuff like that um, hard hat some shippers and receivers require you to wear a hard hat I have a hard hat at home um, just tons of little things like that so and uh, food and drinks and stuff like that I didn't want to try to stock up food and drinks on a trainer truck so I want to get home so I can stock up that stuff in the truck so I stop spending you know 30 40 dollars a day at truck stops which that may not even be an option not too far into the distant future all these truck stops are starting to lock everything down you can't sit and eat in the truck stops anymore loves I don't they have a sign up that says that you can't like it's you can only grab food and take it out to your truck basically and a lot of the uh, what basically what everything's moving to right now is you buy your food at grocery stores and you prepare it at home all of the restaurants are starting to slowly shut down um, they're right now they're doing drive through and carry out and uh, delivery but some of them have stopped doing carry out they only do drive through um, which if I don't have a car that can go through the drive through I can't use that stuff so it's uh, it's getting to the point where I'm gonna have to stock up at the grocery store on my weekend uh, when I'm at home with enough food to make it through the week because uh, it's just it's getting like the shelves are empty at every store we've been to uh, <laughs> Dollar Tree whenever I bought these things at Dollar Tree a couple hours ago there was some old guy in there looking for toilet paper and there was some girl telling him how to get toilet paper she told him that because he's elderly he can go into Aldi's early in the first hour that they open and they will have restocked the shelves with toilet paper and he will be able to get toilet paper first thing in the morning when Aldi's opens like th that's the kind of crap we're dealing with right now is with all this panic buying and it, it's I mean I kind of agree with the buying you should be preparing I don't agree with the hoarding you know like one of these monster packs of toilet paper lasts me like three or four years why in the hell are people buying like 20 monster packs of toilet paper why do they have their whole fucking car loaded up with toilet paper like what are they doing with it it just seems so crazy to me I don't know but uh, I think I think that there are some people that are just being stupid about their purchases and uh, we're having supply issue. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm getting off into a whole other video, but um, things are, uh, I think, only going to get worse from here and it's going to last longer than what most people think, but we'll see. I need to, need to get stuff in the truck. But I think transportation is going to be an essential industry that uh, if there any lockdowns happen, transportation is going to be excluded from those lockdowns. Uh, I'm still going to be working if that happens. Now, the other thing about um, transportation is some things are really hot right now, like food and toilet paper and you know, essential items or things that people see as essential. Other things are falling off 
like flatbed. Flatbed mainly hauls construction material, whether that construction material be a bulldozer or an earth digger or um, uh, shingles, lumber, whatever. In general, flatbed higher, uh, hauls construction material, and construction is dying right now. Um, it is falling off a cliff. There are a lot of flatbed people that are talking about they're sitting around waiting on loads, and it's only going to get worse from here on. So, flatbedders are talking about starting to haul dry van until flatbed picks back up. So, even though dry van is a good place to be right now, if all of the flatbedders start moving over there, um, and any other specialized people where their freight is dying off right now, then um, it's just going to saturate. The, I mean, there's going to be demand there, but it's going to be a saturated market. Um, there's going to be an oversupply of freight haulers, and there's just not enough freight to appease all of them. There's a bottleneck at the distribution centers, and uh, the warehouses and the, uh, the manufacturing plants. Um, I think the, the worst bottleneck is the distribution centers. They're pretty much already running at maximum capacity. They don't have a whole lot of uh, you know excess surge capacity or whatever you want to call it where they can you know we can distribute more toilet paper than what we are currently. Um, I think that the uh, manufacturing plants and the warehouses, can increase a little bit but the uh the big bottlenecks the distribution centers in my opinion uh i think i mentioned that in previous videos the distribution centers have not been willing to take early loads from us for the past week or so and they've been telling us that they're just way too busy um but that's typical of distribution centers they they run at maximum capacity all the time Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm tired. I only slept for like three hours, so I'm just going to keep on, keep on rambling. Uh, I should probably get to bed pretty soon, so I'll go ahead and end the video there. I need to repack all my stuff. So, anyway, thanks for uh, watching. Have a good one. Yay me. I graduated training. Well, I my training's over. I guess my graduation is passing the road test, so that's tomorrow. Have fun. Bye.